That's the time I had like 600,000 loss. Bro, I was crying, man. I was crying. It was like, I had no stop us. She went down 350. Emma stopped us. 400. 500. I don't know. The whole house became so intense. They knew something's wrong, bro. But I had the broke and the screen was black. So I'll sit with her. Uh, flashlight mm-hmm. on my screen and I was to look at the charts and I tell you like I never made money but the thing is like <laughs> people used to like but you made money why do you buy a laptop I said bro if I buy a laptop my bank uh, <laughs> bank's not gonna, that's gonna go down bro. Bank, that, that yeah, like, I'm trying to build to wealth oh, it's yeah. working right now so people are against that and uh, that go like you're not a trader if you even make 5,000 why you like, oh god Hey guys, what's up? Another podcast here in the beautiful mother city of Cape Town with myself, Chris Marketbull, and my co-host, Keegan Van Dijk. What's up, what's um, up? Still confirmed as the strongest trader in <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> and if you guys doubt that, you guys know where we are and you can come and challenge the guy, but still the strongest. And today... Uh, we've got a we've got a guest that is uh, long overdue in terms of getting onto the pod. Um, me and my me and the guest, I'm going to introduce him now. We've been chatting for for a couple of years, mm. and uh, to my right, your left, Shaquille Samai. What's up? What's up? What's Brother, up? Overdue, eh? That is overdue. It, it is overdue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like years, not in months or weeks. Years. And uh, sure. And guys, just want to welcome Shaquille. Um, in his hometown, mm. we actually had to come out here, especially for Shaquille, to get this man on a pod. And uh, Shaquille, very welcome. Thank you, man. And uh, yeah, for the viewers, you guys don't realize, but uh, it is quite late at night. So I do want to say thank you for for thank taking you, out man. the time um, to <laughs> coming this late. But Shaquille, I think we've, we're going to dive straight into it. We actually have quite a bit to talk mm. about. And... Um, I don't think you've been on a podcast before and and I think it's also good you you're a content creator yourself yeah. uh, you do a lot of content um, we we've actually talked uh, back and forth about the content as well but I think let's start from the beginning you have shared some of it mm. on your on your socials but uh, give us a little bit and especially for the viewers that that don't necessarily know you or who's watching for the first time Give them the background of where you started, like from I'm talking from the, start, start, like from the, from the start, beginning, yeah, and raw, uncut. You don't have to yeah. give a polished answer. We want to get that behind <laughs> the scenes where things started for you, like mm. Manenberg, everything. Yeah. We want to remember. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Damn. Okay, uh, let's begin. My name is Shaquille, like uh, Chris said. Thank you guys for you know welcoming me. It's like you said, it's overdue. Like literally years, man. But I felt like, you know, everything works on a perfect timing for a purpose. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like this is feels right now. Because I would have freeze you, say, you know what, next time, next time, we'll do it. But then, like, now it just felt natural, you know? And then, so going back, let's, uh, let's backtrack. Um, grew up in Manenburg, known as a ghetto in Cape Town, very bad. But, um, however, you know, growing up, uh, I always, th- I'm very grateful. Let's begin, I'm very grateful for my mom and my dad. Because my mom is from Cape Town. From Manenburg, my dad is like from Joburg, from Linz, you know, in Asia. So my, I'm mixed, man. So I'm, I had like uh, two sides of the story, man. I had two sides of the story, two different cultures, two different l- upbringings, and I saw that that helped me a lot in my training, in fact, and just general in life. So going back, growing up there, I I, let's just say this: any like any boy that grows there, you know, like the man, what a man is defined there is defined by what you wear. Uh, how you make a living and uh, being like a gangster, you know, so that's like generally like uh, the, what the community they label as yeah. a man, especially when you like they call it uh, like a cute boy, you know, they used to call me like a cute boy. So when you're a cute boy, you are always targeted to be like uh, like the weakest link, you know, so because most guys they they're like we're rough. And I'm like a little cute, like soft, playing Spider-Man, stuff like that. <laughs> 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 and then that's not like normal, then, man. Playing Spider-Man, playing with the Legos. And that it was given from my father's side. You know, my mom, them, they don't really do that. Because the upbringing, that's what you know. You know, the way you, you grew up is either you know that and you don't know whatever you don't know. Mm. So you only know what you know, right? So growing up there, I had to like be a little strong. And I had a, uh, a younger brother. I had a little younger brother, two years younger than me. So I had to always be strong for him. And that led me to the wrong path. You know, drugs, 
uh, gangsterism and uh, a lot of violence at a young age. Usually kids around there becomes like gangsters around about 11, 12 and usually pick up a gun before you, let's say before grade six. And uh, unfortunately, it's not because it sounds easy, like you don't, you say no, you can say no easily, but if you grow up there, it's like, how do I say, you don't get love in the house. You know, this is usually what happens, you don't get love in the house and then you tend to go get love from the brotherhood on the street. As simple as a hug. People don't get, hu- like, kids don't get hugs or kisses from their mother. Because why? It's, it's drug infested house and alcoholism. And no one works there. So the food is like you, a man, like they say, like man stand for himself from yeah, a young yeah, age. Yeah. And you go out to play, like there's no like rules, a hey, six o'clock and be in by the house, five o'clock and I'm going to pick you up from school. Small things like I'm going to pick you up from school or pack lunch for you. That does not exist. So, however, I didn't know you exist because I go to a uh, holiday by my dad. And, <laughs> and you go to, yeah, it's a different life, right? It's crazy. Like, it's just simple, small things. It's not the f- most greatest place. But if you go to Lens or Indonesia, you start seeing, like, yo, kids go to school with um, a lunch, lunch bag. Boxes, yeah, yeah, like, and you go back home, and I go to school, it's like, we walk to school, you can bang school, and no one cares, actually. You know, mm-hmm. they, no one really bothers. So, that already awoken something to me, like, hey, there's a big gap here between, like, us here, you know? And um, backtracking, you go onto the street, you're just chilling, playing games, and then eventually someone will just like, yo, you're my brother, bro. You're my brother, na? And like, yeah, you're my brother. And because I live in a court where, like, the leader, I'm not going to mention the name, but anyone who knows, it's Inga court. That's where I grew up. And as a leader, a gang's leader's court, you know? So automatically, where you're playing, your brothers, you're growing up in that type of gang, you know? And um, without you knowing, it's like simple as, yo, Kiggs, uh, can you just take this for me to Uncle Cedric? Um, I'll give you like a 10 rand, yeah. uh, 50 rand. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, uh, it's Uncle Jeff, you know, let's just take <laughs> it. What's wrong with Uncle Jeff? Yeah, yeah. But you know, in you, you know who's Uncle Jeff. Uncle Jeff is like the lead of this, you know, so you just take it automatically, boom, take it. And then automatically that already they, that connection already, just doing that, you're already the brother. So money's given to you, and you get runner. love. <laughs> you, without you knowing, you people become, become runner. Run, yeah, without you knowing, you really become, but uh, you're getting the money and they like Jays, you know, Jordans, it's mm. bro, just Jordans, bro. And you get a, a pair of Jordans, it's like, yo, here's a Jordans, and you don't get it from your household. Yeah? Yo, so you're like feeling lit. Yeah. So that slowly builds up, and I went on the wrong road, like around uh, grade, I'll say by grade six, I was on drugs already. Um, I kept it away from my mom, but my family knew because it's automatically you can see the way you look, what's happening. I was on the streets already. Um, I was already not even going to school, man. Uh, I think that's when my mom, the tipping point is I threw a guy in the fire. Yeah, for, because he like bullied my brother. And he was from a different court and a different gang. So you just bullied me and I couldn't take that and I just threw him in the the fire. That led up to, you know, altercations and like a whole lot of things. And my mom said, you know, this environment you're growing up is not good for you. You need to go to a new environment. And that's when we made the change to move to Joburg. I think that the, because even though we went to Joburg, it wasn't the best of best, but we lived in a complex, man. Right. You know, like in a complex in Mondio. So um, I don't know if you know it's Mondio, but like it's like a different place to the ghetto. So it's like, oh, there's townhouses and like there's a mall right across. You can just walk to the mall and people dress different. They speak differently. So that, uh, that was a very much like what attracted me. Like, I mean, there's something more to life than where I grew up. And that's why I said, you only know what you know, because when I go back, they only know what they know. And I'm like, I was exposed to s- small things that opened my mind to the ease more. That th- that's where the start of like, I want to make money. I didn't know how, and I go to school, I end up going to school there uh, at Mondio. Let's just keep a bit, go to Mondio High School. Um, however, going there, I start ki- seeing kids, you know, they come with school bag, and I ask them like, yo, you get money to school? And like, if you don't know, ask like, do you get money to school? You just are like, you're like, you're like, oh, so you got money? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Did you get money? Nah. Uh-huh. You, 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 do something, you, you won't say no, but you're like, you'll, you know, do something. I'll spend my yeah. money already. Probably <laughs> 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 they with you all day. How do you spend money? <laughs> nah, so like, spend you know, you're saving school, yeah. or like, you know, you're like something like that. And anyway, the case is, that just said like, yo, and I asked him like, what does your parents do, man? And most of them was like, oh, my dog, my, 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 um, father my mom is maybe a, a lawyer or like working like manager or like, like yo is it and, I, and they'll come drop the, ki- the kids with like certain cars not the best of best I mean like if someone come out the Range Rover or anything like that, for you that don't come from that you'll be like yo that's lit man and I want that whatever it is I want that bit. because where I come from those who drive that they're doing that and I don't want to do that yeah, yeah. so I knew automatically that yes I want to go into something else Fast forwarding, I think I met, um, I think my mom, we had just financial things and we had to come back in family problems, we had to move back. And this is where it, like, it was great. That just that time of the years from grade six, seven, eight, and nine, it opened my mind to so much more. The time I came back, moved back to Cape Town, 
my mind was really like at the point where I, know, I knew I wanted more, man, you know. And my mom always said that to me. And my father taught me law of attraction. Like, you manifest, you manifest, bro. You can't do this. Yes, your, your vibe doesn't determine your future or your reality. You can just, you know, speak in existence, write it, and visualize it, and believe in it. So that was fed to me, and I believe that. So I came back. When I speak about those things, the kids didn't really believe in it. So I was like, he told me there's going to be some people that's going to, you know, the resistance. Go, resist yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But you should just believe it, man, you know. I said, hey, cool. So when I came back, I came to grade like about nine. I was out for a, a year to school because I was in a drop out of school at uh, grade nine. Yeah, about grade nine. I came down grade nine. End of grade nine, I came. And grade 10, I was going to be like drop out of school because I was starting to tattoo, man. Um, I started tattooing. And then uh, I met a, like a mentor in the tattooing industry because I was like good in sketching. And then he's like, yo, you're good in sketching and you have this drive to make money. I want to become more. And I said, okay, let's jump on that, you know, that wagon. And I made like at that age in grade 10, if you're making like a thousand, two thousand in a, in a single day, uh, not every single day consistent, but in a month you have like 10, 15K. Yeah. You, you, your mom is automatically say like, why don't you do this as like a career? And my mom was like, my mom was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're making money. Do you see yourself? There? I'm like, yes, I see myself doing this. So I did it for like a few, like say about say four months out of school um, in Long Street. There was a, this, 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 this uh, the parlor still there actually. So um, afterwards I realized, man, nah, man, look here, the hours I'm working, man, it's crazy and it's not gonna do it for me. Mm. I just I, I don't feel like this is what it's meant to be, man. Like working so hard for money, like you work very hard for money. I didn't like that fact. So automatically I went back to school. Um, the schools didn't wanna take me. Uh, year in Cape Town, so we went to the government and they said, "Yo, put me in the school." And they just put me in the school. You can't give a child no education, so they put me end up in Oakland's high school. Um, and then this is where the beginning of training begins, actually, like the whole thing, because I met my my business sir, um, and he told me he's like, "I see you like because I sold things in school, even though they said you're not you're not allowed to, <laughs> but I'll sell like things, you know." So the <laughs> hustle. So, the hustle. so that hustle was was in you. Um, at a very young yeah, age. Yeah, I'll like say that. Yeah, like naturally. I would only begin like really selling things really like in high school, you know. So I started selling things and then he stopped me and he said, yo, you can really make money because I was like fascinated about penny stocks and like he introduced that. Even though it wasn't in, in the in the, in the the educational thing, like you will just dab into it. You, do you guys know that you can start because I used to like the sausage roll and he's like do you know what the sausage roll instead of buying 50 cent sausage roll go buy you some 10 cent stocks ah, and okay. I was like ah, okay. yo and he's like you can leave for years and it grows by itself so that fascinated I was so fascinated with that analogy or that idea end up I go speaking to him yo I heard you like the penny stocks but like I don't want to be like a phony guy so I just like go low key off the off the class. Hey, tell me about the penny um, stocks. Yeah, tell me about the penny stocks. <laughs> <laughs> so low key, tell me about the penny stocks. <laughs> 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 tell me about the penny stocks, and I end up jumping. So um, that's the beginning of where I started going into the financial industry. You know, tapping into, searching, searching, searching. Came across a guy, Adam Koo. Uh, Sounds very familiar. He was like big on YouTube, man. Like yeah. Asian guy, forex oh, and stocks. Yeah, 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 big yeah, on yeah, so yeah, I dabbled yeah. into there. By grade 11, um, I, I was reading to like looking into stocks. By grade 11 or grade 12, I was reading to stocks, but I wasn't linked to Forex, man. I heard about Forex. Um, shout out to Riff Wayne. I was the first person I ever saw about Forex. Hey. So I was like, yo, this guy, look at this guy. Even though I didn't know, automatically, like, you see the front page, like, yeah. yo, nah, I wanna do this. And I didn't care how. It's like, I wanna live that life, man. You know, they're, they're showing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Fast forward again, um, I end up finishing school. I pulled up my socks, man. I pulled up my socks like big time. We went extra classes like crazy because I thought, you know, I'm going to really prove to everyone um, because I'm from my dad's side. Um, I'm the black sheep, man. You know, because oh I was yeah. like the... Uh, um, the outcast. Outcast. I was a child outside the, f the marriage, man. You know what I mean? So for me, it was like, yeah, and I'm colored. I'm, I'm the colored side. So the Indian. So like, yeah, you're dirty, you know, yeah. and where I'm coming from. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to use that as motivation. Yeah, not the best motivation, but it gave me some push, you know, to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this and prove to my family, my, my dad's family, say like, yeah, I'm, I'm really like, I can become successful, more successful than you guys. Even. It was bad, but I used that. Yeah. Ending up going. Sorry, just, mm? just on that. Um, Eric Thomas actually talked about it where he said, if you use trauma mm -hmm. or any type of... Uh, maybe a bad thing mm. and you weaponize it mm. you turn it into a good thing and mm. that for instance being the outcast and being the black sheep mm. in the family 
you weaponized that and that's what gave you that purpose and that drive so you took something that was negative mm. and even though you say it's not the right thing it, it is actually the right thing because then you pulled up your socks yeah. that give you the, gave you that gave you determination yeah. drive so but i'm approved to you guys. so so again <laughs> guys for for the chat yeah. you can weaponize something yeah. bad into something good something but good. but please please exactly. go ahead um, which I truly agree with that. Actually, you can definitely use a uh, negative turn into positive because it's energy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You just have to reel it. Energy can't be recreated. Um, tr- like a new piece of energy can't be recreated. It, it can only be transferred into new form. Mm. So that law of attraction, like which it comes from, and then uh, yeah, end up going to school. My mom was like, "Yo, you need to study now." Right, and I was like, okay, um, I don't think I want to study, man. And she's like, no, you must study. You must like just try it out. You never know what's gonna happen. I end up going to this test. What do you call that test when you like to do test to your personality? Uh, uh, psychometric uh, test. It's like a psychometric thank you. test. Yeah. Thank you for the nice word. <laughs> 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 so I end up doing a test. Um, but I did a test at Damn them, man. I don't know why they, they, they had this free test. There's this thing like come to come find out like what you're supposed to like yeah. your purpose. Yeah, like yeah, your, yeah, you and do. I just say, yeah, it's free. Let's go do it. In the meantime, they actually want to sign you up. You know, so they uh, get it. Like, yeah. So they do the test, right? And they're like, yeah, you like media. Which was quite true, actually. We yeah, think yeah, about yeah, it. That's yeah. true. They're like, you intermediate. Because I was uh, explaining to like, I like uh, to understand like how to make videos. I remember I was already doing like the viral video, like on mm. YouTube. Yeah, I yeah. want to make like videos. I want to go into the content. Like I didn't say content creator, man. But I mean like, but I was yeah, trying to explain. Yeah, I, want, yeah, I don't want to be making the video. I want to like make videos in, like, yeah. you know, in front, in front of the camera. And they were like, okay, you know what? Maybe journalism is good for you. Journalism and media is good for you. I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it then. Did it. Oh, bro. That was crazy. I ended up, Look, it opened my mind to understand gatekeeping and how to construct information to the audience, which is good. The news reporting was the most best subject I could ever do there, man. Like that, that there was the best ever because so it made me start to understand like how the audience need to understand a message because you might understand it in your mind, but to convey the message to your audience is very important. Like communication is a, there's like a barrier, you know, mm. and that helped a lot. So I ended up going to uni, um, college, but then. I started realizing something again in me. The penny stocks, man. You know? ah, okay. uh, it wasn't like, it didn't fade away. I knew like... I saw it in the back of your head. Yes, man. There's low-key there, That's man. leveraging Yeah, but it's like you dabble. Money. You still dabble like into it, search about it, and you leave it, you search it. And I think at just one point, I was feeling out at the classes, man. I felt out. I wasn't feeling like I was meant to be there. So I ended up not going anymore. And in, in town, it was in town. So they, by the gardens, there's a, the college was there and then the gardens and there's, a free, there's two libraries. So there was Wi-Fi there, right? Free, unlimited forever. So I was like, yo, that's my opportunity. My mom thinks I'm going to college, man. For the whole year, I wasn't going. I started dabbling to the stocks. So I started going to stocks, didn't trade. I didn't trade at all. I was learning not only stocks, drop shipping, YouTube, like how to like make videos go viral on YouTube. Sorry, sorry, yeah. what 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 year was this? It was 2018. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 2018. So 2018, I'm um, I just turned I'm 17 at that age, right? Um so for me it's like I'm gonna dabble into like all the online, but I know eventually I'll take the money I make from some sort of thing and invest it into stocks. So you need money to invest yeah, in yeah, stocks. Yeah. So I was like, that's my end goal. I can work anything else online and take money to into stocks and build some sort of retirement, you know, mm. that all dividends in that. Because I was very fascinated with dividends, man. I was like, wow, people can get paid by just having your money grow and it's paying you out. Like, yeah. wow, why not? Yeah. Made sense. So, um, I end up failing. Mom doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I end up failing crazy, man. My mom didn't know. And I'm still pay. But like, you know what I did? I took the money. And I was like playing with the money and stuff like that. So at the end of the, end of the year, I end up failing. But what saves me now is that my mom said, you know what? Do you really want to do this? Because uh, you don't seem so happy and stuff like that. And I think that's the, mo- that's the moment I used that. I was like, yeah, yes. And then um, love trash come into place. Everything at this moment, that's why everything happens for a purpose, man. You might not understand it in the current moment, but everything lines up for something to happen. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. meant for you, right? At the moment, it might not make sense, but when that event is done, you're like, oh, I either learned a lesson or actually elevated me in my life. Mm. Yeah. So for me, at that moment in time, that failing happened. I was learning how to go into the financial industry. And then I was manifesting at that time. I was, I was really manifesting low attraction, writing down what I want in life, right? I want to go into the financial industry. I'm a successful um, uh, you know, investor in the stocks and that. And I want to be a successful YouTuber and like, make, become famous. Yeah, I want to become famous. I, like, I want to become famous on, on media. <laughs> anyway, 
I got a call from I didn't know it's a broker, but I got a call from the the broker's really gone man, Globe Trix. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can I you search them, they're still on there, but they're not there anymore. So I got a call from they said I I I applied for a job as a business developer. Right? I didn't know what is that, but I played it off, man. It's white lies, you know? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I need it. And my mom said, you know what? At that point, it just made sense, you know? So I had like things to back it up. So I'm like, ma, look here, I have a job here, right? It's in the financial industry. I can work my way up. And, and it's what you want to Yeah, it's what you want to do. It's like the industry I want to be yeah. in, man. It just makes sense, you know? So I told my mom, I convinced my mom. Mom said, okay, go. So I went. I end up like leaving now college, right? I go study, um, uh, start working the brokerage. That's the first time I heard about Nasdaq. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> the first time I heard about Nasdaq, bro. Like I didn't know what is Nasdaq. They just said Nasdaq and FTSE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FTSE yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, Yo, what is this? And it just felt. It, you come inside, and it's a Wall Street, bro. It's like you like it's like even standing up. It's a call center in the meantime, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, da, 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 da. and I'm like, Yo, this drive and everyone's wearing suits, bro. Like mm. it was a rule, you need to wear a suit. I didn't have a suit, you know, so I was like, yeah, this is where I want to be, man. Anyway, the guy asked me to sell him a pen. Yeah, so I sold him a pen, he was, but I think it was my energy, man. Yeah, I couldn't even sell, really. But mom was teaching me how to pitch. So I was telling him, like, the benefits of the pen, not the features. And he was like, wow. So before I started, I'm like, I said, I, I told him, I'm going to speak about the benefits of the pen, not the features, okay? And he's like, wow. And that just triggered him. Like, why do you speak about the benefits? Because I said, oh, I need to show them why they need it for their life, you know? The yeah. features is, is nothing. And he was intrigued by that. And then he said, like, you look, when can you start, man? I said, the next day, immediately. I didn't have a suit, though. So I was like, the next day, immediately. I had to borrow a suit bro, from my, my a close friend of mine, who I started trading with. Um, going in, I found it's a broker. But you see, the thing is, this broker, is, it's not like today's broker. It's crazy, because they were doing, they were like... Um, Gold calling. Yes. They have the actual clients trading, and then you do cold calling. And yeah. I didn't know that, man. I was like, yo, okay end up calling random people and like, yo, do you not save in these? And I guess that's a form of investment. And we do this three-step process, bro. Like, you do like a, 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 like a canvas, get to know the person. I say, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to know more about you. And I say, if I ever have something, can I just call you back? They're like, yeah. And then second sale, second call is like anti-sale. Now you're trying to explain to them what is investment. I say, do you ever own like a savings account? They're like, yeah. I mean, that's investment. So clearly you're doing investment. But how about, imagine the stock goes up so much. And they're like, wow. I'm like, you see what you're missing out of? But I don't have anything on my desk right now. I'll call you back. Is that okay with you? And like, yeah, no. I said, no, like, I don't want to waste your time, man. I really didn't waste your time. Did I waste your time now? No. Great stuff. So Merry Christmas. I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> the, our thing was always Merry Christmas at the yeah, end yeah, yeah. because why the next time I call I say it's the guy from Merry Christmas uh, and it's like so oh it's, it's yeah. you yeah. and automatically the call starts on a high note like yeah. I know you I remember you you the guy it's Merry Christmas I said that's good so I need to leave like some sort of mark and when I start the call it starts in high pitch so like hey how are you no it's like ah it's you laughing yeah. I said then I like Ew. then it's the actual sale yeah so I didn't like the whole so process. So it was three, three calls, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we That's take all. Okay. So the usually a normal sale take like about two weeks, man. Okay. Two or three weeks with okay. one client. Okay. And so it's not like immediately. It's like three-step process. And that helped a lot, in fact, in life and marketing and today's time. So jumping on, um, I think I saw this guy, fast forward, right? Uh, this guy he used to work with us there. He came in. I don't know if it's a demo. The, the, look here. I don't know if it's demo or real, right? But the case, he came in the elevator and he said, showed me 70K, bro profits and he was working there he's like nah i'm, I'm leaving <laughs> and i'm like yo seventy thousand, bro that's a lot man at that time you know so i'm like yo nah okay this is real and everyone there is common like traders they traders yeah and that's the salesman they salesman man <laughs> they're not selling. they're not traders they're salesmen so everyone's like keeping up this persona at work bro that they're traders but then no one's trading and you're telling your clients to invest and stuff like that but you're not doing it. So that guilt, like the consciousness, I couldn't go home and I invested, like I tell people to invest money and I didn't do it myself. So I felt actually bad. And this guy came and showed that money, he left work. He literally left work. So for me, it's like, ah, it's real. And I started, open, I opened my first account with him and then I went home and I called my best friend at that time, which has, let me show you something, I'll hook you up with something you can make money. Cause he was also on that same, yeah, road, that yeah same journey. Yeah, yeah. uh, same about stocks in that. We were very into like stocks. And he's like, yo, you one foot in, bruh. Let's do this. You're like you like our inside work. <laughs> There's nothing like that, bro. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I felt like, at that point I felt like I'm, I have my foot in. I'm inside. I can get inside work. Like what to do? Not even bro. So I, I opened my first account. Um, I dabbled into it. I won't forget this. We had a, a, a flat screen in his in his room. A ruler. That's the first time I ever seen a chart, man. Like myself opening it. Did you? Please don't tell me you charted with the ruler. Yes, I did, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I charted with the ruler, bro. I'm not, look, cause you don't, you, look, the thing is, right? <laughs> three, a three touch there with the ruler. All right, it's going to touch, yeah? I did Check the, the no, it's not that you, we saw a lot of lines, man. Oh, okay. And it wasn't candlesticks. And now when it wasn't candlesticks, it was um, I can, I can, I, like... Oh, I can ask you. Yes, candles, candles oh, yeah. yeah. So me, I was like, yo, this is lines, bro. Check this, check this. Put the line like it, put the ruler like it. Now, and then we both had egos. This is the crazy part, right? So he didn't want to take my my call. I don't take his call. So we said, okay, you know, one of us is gonna win, and we just hedged each other. He sell, I buy. He sell, I buy. One of you winning. One was winning. I was winning. And this bold confidence in me, man. This is the moment I was like, nah, I know what I'm doing, bro. <laughs> 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 I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna leave this fucking job, bro. <laughs> but the things I grew like ten k. I mean, ten dollars, right? Not a lot of money, but ten dollars to like about uh, okay, let's say hundred something to three thousand in a week. So for me, it's like, yo, my bro, right. like the job is paying me basic of 5,000. <laughs> like, like, this is not the right, my bro. Yeah, nah, yeah. this is, this is, this is. But the funny fact, I didn't even draw any money. No? That's the crazy part. I just felt like I must leave. That's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so how does people live a life and they're not making money on this thing? It yeah. must be real. I went back and then uh, I remember still Food Lovers is downstairs. I don't even know if FM World in Cape Town. No, downstairs no, no. is like Food Lovers, man. Right? So um, I told them I'm coming back now. But the thing is, I put everything off. I logged out, took my bag, and they asked me, why are you leaving your bag? I said, nah, man, I'm going to get some food. And put it in my bag, and I'm going to come back up. So I went down. I was sat there, bought my nice uh, pie, not a pie, uh, a pizza, like a slice of pizza for me. Ate it, and I got a call. Where the fuck are you an hour later? You're not here. Where are you? And then I said, I ain't come back, man. I'm not coming back. I promise you, I'm going to trade for loving. <laughs> 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 Most dumbest thing, but look hey. at it. Uh, that's it began. It, it started there, bro. And I, and I, I went home now. I couldn't tell my mom. <laughs> man, <laughs> bored with his mom to <laughs> get there, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> you know, after I put my mom through already, I can't go tell her, bro. Hey. So I end up, she like, she does find out because I don't go to work. <laughs> yeah. So like, we, what are you doing? I end up like just giving lies, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we off and we can work from home and stuff like that. You know, just online stuff. You know, she finds out, you know. Now it's like, you need to go study, bro. This is not like a job. I said, okay, cool. Now I need to go study. Look, I, I was like trying to convince my mom, man. Like, I, I, I promise this you. Is, this is a real thing. So from 2018 up to like 20, 2019, that whole year, man, you know, two years right here, I'm dabbling to, I'm in trading, man. I'm in trading, but not Forex, no? Like it was stocks. So Walmart, I remember Walmart was my biggest trade, man. So I went, um, I ended up starting again. Uh, I was like into bodybuilding. I did like uh, competitions. That's a great thing. I just did competition. I came like West Province first, we, and then I went to South, I, wanted, I came second in South Africa, but natural, right? And then I was like, and I had like opportunity to go to France, and then eventually I got a coach at one point, like into the IFBB and uh, like that. So, but then there was other things to it, you know. So I was like, should I really? And then their mom was like, this is perfect, man. Think about it. You're German. You want to grow in this industry. And uh, but personal trade is there, man. Trade is there. Personal trainer. <laughs> While you, you can personal train, you can still gym. And I'm like, you can still do this as a side thing for now. So that's my mom's whole thing. You don't have the money for it right now. Yeah. You know, like you need some sort of income to fuel yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. just say you full time trader. It's not going to work. Just because you made so little money, now you're going to pay. What, you gonna, what, what bills are you going to pay with that? So the reality check came in. I'm like, okay, now, nah, let's go back. Go back 2019. But here's the 2019K, right? I have more freedom. Like so much more freedom. I don't know why that year felt so I had so much freedom. And I'm dabbling into trading so much. And eventually I got to the Forex and then my friend as well. I took like I think it was our in our studying, I was actually doing that. I was really studying. I was really writing and I wasn't like lying that time. And then um I took like a, a certain amount of money to X amount, right? Can't really say, but it was a lot of money at that time. And for me it was like I made the literal amount of money though. That's what I know. And I sat in the class and ego came again. Like it just creeps up in you. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, hey, can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just creeps up in you because now if I look back, I said that was ego. You know, if I had the chance to go back and redo it, I wouldn't say I regret, but I would do it a little differently, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think it would put you much more further in life. In the moment, in the spur moment, felt right. 
okay? So I made a literature's amount, it was about 15,000, right? And I'm in this literature's class, the person in front of me um, was like, was speaking, I, I know she was Indian though, not, not the, but yeah. I remember I was talking <laughs> to them, and I was like, yo, I made this literature's money, man, like salary, and I must go study, what does the personal trainer earn? I'm like, I made the money, I can just leave, and I left. That's the day I left again. I dropped out. Believe it or not, I walked down home. I lived across the train station. I blew the account. Because oh. oh. I, like, I was like, I'm going to make more money, man. While you walk. Yeah. Hey. And I, was I know that I, feeling. You know what? I couldn't go back to, to class. Because I was like, I really put that out to everyone. I'm never coming back. You're going to see. I'm, yeah, I'm uh. a successful trader. And I couldn't go back. Because like, I couldn't like humble myself. Yeah. Man. And I couldn't tell my mom at the same time. Right? I grew up my mom at the same time. So I end up saying, you know what? Um, I'm going to just do the same thing again. Like, not go. Mom gives me money. I go and I play it out like I'm going. And by this time, I take the money and I'm using it to trade. So I end up doing that blowing, making, blowing, making, blowing. And uh, that's, the, that's the point I think um, I end up just, um, and COVID came. Good shot. Happy. COVID came. Everything's closing. <laughs> 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 so I tell her, look, perfect timing. Look at me. It's a game. God is speaking to us. I need to do this thing, man. So mom didn't believe in it as much. She supported like any other mother, like do mm. it, but like still need to have some sort of yeah, security. Plan B. Yeah, security. Like plan B. Yeah, it's yeah, back, more certain, a little backstop, you know? yeah. Yes, because this is not like this is unknown, man. It's like it's not certain. You know, you lose money, you make money, you lose money. You look <laughs> more sad. So I ended up telling her, like, just give me this two years. I promise you. And she said, okay, two years. And it was bad mouse. And that's the moment I say, okay, of course your mom would, I don't think my mom would have ever kicked me out. But I just, I knew like, okay, there's some sort of pressure, right? Some sort of pressure to push Time me. Line. To, yeah, yeah, timeline to be out. And I, so um, I dabbled into it. My mom found some money. Looked like at that time, I did work call center, so don't get me wrong, because I ended up asking my mom money in that time. And then it's not like liquor mm. to ask your mom money and you know what's the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I didn't come from poverty, poverty, but like my mom works in a, mom is a manager in a, in a call center, so I know like, it's not like you're gonna get the best, 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 but mom is trying, you know what I mean? She budgeted for my deposits, bro. Mm. <laughs> it just felt wrong. Like, it just, yeah, I'm yeah. like, nah, man. So I ended up trading and I worked in call center, so doing both, right? And that's the turning point for me. Because I took all my money and I just put it in and I started growing accounts crazy. It was like, it was like, that's the point when the accounts started growing. But now I started learning about meditation, learning about routine, going into monk mode, alpha mode, and like, Putting up a daily routine, like this is the goals I need to hit. This is a training session I must hit. Don't trade the entire day, trade one session, focus on a certain pay. You know, like I call it the one rule. You know, one strategy, one pay, one time, one session, one trade day keeps a doctor away. So for me, I felt that just made sense. And everything started lining up. And um, I didn't leave work this time just because I made a trade. I was like consistently making it. And what yeah. really sealed the deal for me is now I go home and I give them my money. And this is what yeah, no, it's real. working. Yeah, it's like real. I'll buy electricity, water, I'll give my mom money, and I go back to my granny, go home to like man work, I give her money. So like people started seeing like it is this is actually like real now, man. You know, and I end up leaving my job, but now trading full time now. I'm not making a lot. I always say like so long my puppies pay my bills, I was happy. I was not trying to like, be a social media trader. So it's just yeah. like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm it's, a, it's a living. Yeah, it's you a living. Even make. if I make ten K bro, it's like People feel it's a little, but for me, it's like I didn't have to go work at the job, man. But you were still you were doing what you loved, and you were yeah, it was nice, man. It was just like I had this. I was so fascinated with routine. Yeah. How amazing! Like I feel with the routine. I I, I want to come back, and and it's a question everyone and and the mm. viewers always always want to ask, and it's something we get asked on a daily basis in terms of strategy, mm. and I think. Uh, I'm going to give you the, the full question. Um, where your strategy started with mm. what you started trading, um, how that developed over the years yeah. and where your trading is now. Yeah. And uh, just to give the guys, because I know that's that's the one question everyone is wanting to hear. Do you trade SMC, ICT, mm. uh, trend lines, whatever. So so take us from the start to, okay. to okay. where it's developed to where you are now. So I'm going to first give a shout out to my ex-mentor, right? I'll say ex-mentor, um, Sean Lee. Like he really set the foundation for price action for me personally. I even picked up a lot of uh, people 
restructures in Thai cores mm. like a lot, bro. Like yo, like Astro FX, like people took their cores and just like restructured. So coming back all the way, <coughs> we're profitably. I won't say consistently profitable, but I was profitable. There's a difference, right? Because mm. you make money, but not consistently. So profitability, I was dabbling to everything you can think of. Everything. I had a book. I wanted to bring the book. But I just didn't. I felt like it's a bit too much. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't want to be like too much. And like, yo, see guys, this is the whole like the whole <laughs> road road map or whatever. <laughs> but I have this book right. I had like thirty four concepts, thirty four concepts of, of trading. I went through every single one of it. Name it, indicators, which I'm not against. A lot of people are against indicators, because they tend to like they were exposed to indicators by someone who doesn't like it, and that's what you only know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So automatically, oh, it doesn't work. And automatically, you just know nothing. That's what you know. So it doesn't work. I said, why? Because that person told me so. <laughs> 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 we, we actually said it. It's this, it's this weird thing in the industry where, where we've actually made indicators the enemy. And I'm yeah. like, why? dude, what? Indicators. And, <laughs> and then, then the argument is usually indicators are a lagging indicator. And I'm like, no shit, dude, because you need past data. But even the candle's lagging. That's the crazy that, part. You that is what we said. Data, yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> I said, no indicator is going to give you future data. That's the thing is to basically derive or conceptualize yeah. your idea based off past data. Yeah, but that's the thing. You're not even so candlestick will give you future data. Yes. You are using yeah. past data. So whether so you like indicate to candlestick, both of it's giving you for, uh, like previous data. Yeah, yeah. So going back into it, I was dabbing to um, the first, first, first strategy was a ruler, like I said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was the rule, the my own, uh, uh, own analogy. And it made money, man. It was just like, see this and see this lines and do it. Yeah. But eventually when I did dabble into concepts, it was like um, just simply for Bonacci, psychological levels and uh, dabbling to trend lines. And eventually, I didn't know what smart money, like I only found out about smart money like when ICD yeah, yeah, drop, yeah. drop, like popping up. But it was just simply trend line, Allied waves, Fibonacci, a lot of indicators. I dabbled into all indicators just to find out what works for me. Because mm. I started picking up something that uh, a strategy can work for the person, you know, like they yeah. can give you to the step by step. But at, the, at some point, you need to customize to your personality, yeah. right? And how you trade, like how as a characteristic, because every market has a different characteristic, right? So your personality needs to meet it. And that person might like you. I like you study, but you might not like you study. We use a, you gave me a strategy. I need to, like, some sort of. Rework it. Rework it, right? Till it works for me. So I started picking up it very quick. So I was diving into everything, like just anything that I could pick up, like go to YouTube, um, five minute strategy. Then I pick up five minute strategy. Okay, one minute strategy, pick up one minute strategy. Anything I could have just, but then this is the turning point. Uh, um, I was blessed with the cause, right? I, I did buy the cause with Astro, and then I wasn't taking it serious, okay? I wasn't taking it that serious because like, ah, man, that was, it didn't make sense to me really. And then I was blessed with the course because I was I was like really making some sort of wave at some point because I was giving my logins out and this was like great. And then I think it was a shout out to, um, I even have the own opinion about him, but shout out to Clint, right? Clint Physics. I wasn't live with him and he saw my data, he saw everything about me, right? And my routines and that he was so fascinated and what I'm doing. And he's like, yo, I want to help you, man. I really want to help you. Like, and um, I was training with the laptop I like the broke and the screen was black. So I'll sit with a uh, flashlight mm -hmm. on my screen and I'll to look at the charts. And I tell you like, I don't make money. But the thing is like, <laughs> people used to like, but you made money, why do you buy a laptop? I said, bro, if I buy a laptop, my bank loves it. My uh, bank's uh, not going to go down, bro. Bank, uh, yeah, no like I'm trying to build wealth. Oh, it's yeah. working right now. So people are against that. And uh, that could like, you're not a trader. If you even make 5,000, why you know that? Oh God. So I was like, and then he asked me, yo, um, can I send you a laptop and a course through? Uh, for free bro shout out to you and then you can always i want to keep up uh, like personally up to date with like um in tech with you in contact with you i said yeah sure i was so surprised man i was like wow someone believes in me you know and eventually yeah. now after years someone eventually sees that my work even though i don't make so much money but i'm putting work in this so that gave me motivation i know sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but it's, it's actually so crazy because i've always heard the story of clint finding this trader he got the laptop for it and they actually did not know yeah. that it was you. Like, yeah, that's oh, crazy, really? Yeah. I didn't man. know it was. And that gave me some, that also gave me some sort of push on social media. It did actually give me, like, I won't lie, like, in that one That first scene, little burst. Bro, on it live, I won't lie, man. It, yo, hundreds of hundreds, just drrr, like, it's just follow, follow, follow immediately. These followers just flying in my way. And then I w at that time, I was just doing free call-outs already, like, on my Instagram story, like, yeah, I'm going to buy you. Not trying to 
predict or say I'm the man of trading. Mm. I'm just trying to document. You're almost journaling your yes. own yeah. process. I'm trying to okay. document my journey and show like, yes, I'm not the most best trader, but I'm going to show you what it really takes to get a, become a successful trader. And then I dabble into this course. Look, it has some valuable stuff there, but then I look back, it, it is the same course as Astro. Yeah, yeah. You, so I, I told we actually had a guest on previously. <coughs> yeah. Um, and I, I followed Clint's journey from, from the start, from the golf days when he still lived in a townhouse, yeah. left Virgin Active, whatnot. Um, but, but here's the thing. He, and, and this is what I said. I said you don't have to become a mentor while you are still learning. Yeah. And what Clint did was he was still learning from Amon and Sean yeah. Lee from Astro and then, became and then he st- he basically took their course and again he worked in sales at Virgin Active <laughs> and and he thought, Okay, flip, these guys did a course, they making X amount yeah. of money. Let me just repackage this, put my own logo on there and, and resell that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I am i do not want to no wait. Uh, like he pre- I appreciate a lot. Look, he helped. Yeah, me. yeah look, he and there's some stuff in there that's not in there. I'm not gonna lie, but it, like the cause is literally as terrific. <laughs> <laughs> and then the crazy part is he was at the seminars with me. He was yo, yo, teaching. at the birthday, yes, like the, the birthday, birthday bash. He, he was, was there. And I was like, bro, I'm following these people. So instead of going to him, go directly to the source. Yeah. yeah. And that's where I made the switch now. And, I, and Sean Lee just, he sculpts and he's into today. And I love that because I was, um, I'm not going to mention them. I, was, I did some courses from people in Cape Town that, that geez, man. <laughs> 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 like, let's just begin, right? They can't just take a trade in front of you because oh, wow. yeah. I don't, don't, don't want to seem too big. That was the reply, man. So, <laughs> yeah, and then I end up, I wasn't doing it because I wanted to take control. I just end up taking trades with students. I, I think it, I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else posted yeah. and he said, um, how can you teach somebody to fish? And then when it's time to fish and you say, okay, let's yeah. go out on the boat. Uh-huh. And now let's fish together. It's like, oh, no, no, I can't show you. Yeah. Like, you need to fish alone. Uh, and it's yeah. the same with trading. That, like, that's a, that's if, what if doing, I man. teach you, <laughs> like, to fish now, nah, it must be like, okay, Shaquille, let's let's go yeah. out to the ocean. Uh, show me now. And you know, he was, the person offered, like, to send signals in the group, bro. And he couldn't send it. Because when he started sending the signals in the group, right? And I didn't want to do that because I was feeling pressurized. Because what I was doing, I was just, like, sending my trades in the group. Because he said, we can send our trades, uh, everything in the group, right? And I was just dropping. But, but name the person. No, no, no. Okay. Look, you, you will definitely know him. Okay. Right. Fuck it, man. Uh. <laughs> Do you know MSD? MSD. Michael. Oh, Michael, Michael Schmidt. Michael Schmidt. Bro, I, 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 look, hey. yeah, I even... S- I'm going <laughs> to I'm I'm spill the beans, man. Yeah, spill it. I spill the beans. Spill it. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, man, just honestly, like yeah, transparency. Yeah. No, like no, transparency no. in the transparency, community. Yeah. Same like the problems. We I had Red Rolio on transparency, you earlier. Like, we, look, yeah, we dived into That guy can't trade, man, to begin with. He pays people to send his signals out. So for me, it was like I was in the group, very active, and I was growing accounts. Yes, small, but if you look at the skill, it's the yeah, skill. A good, good, yeah, good, good, right. And it's not because he taught me. I was learning from, from uh, Sean Lee, and yeah. he and you, he, he couldn't send trades out. He couldn't because he was losing every time you send a setup out, he'd lose. And people were asking him like, "Yo, why can't you trade with us just live?" And I said, "You know what? I'm just in everything in this group, and I just started going through it, bro." And eventually people were like, like, nah, this guy, I mean, he's not really a trader, <laughs> man. He's an educator. There's a there's three people. There's an uh-huh. analyst, there's an analyst, there's an educator and a trader. Yeah, Which yeah. are you? You know, and, and that's why I was like, nah, man, I can't be with the educator. You know, I'm gonna move. And no, just pure love, man. And I and I left him, right? And then I just focus on myself. Just self because, like, because I realized the group there's too many opinions yeah. and I don't need that right now at that stage of my life. So you and and shout and out, shout out the rubbish. Y- yes, because you, you can it say it buy, I can sell it now, it yeah. it, which one do I take? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we, we talked about it the, even the one day on stream and mm-hmm. I've also been trading for years and I was determined um, to buy a certain pair and Keegan had an opposite bias to me and then even, even though my boxes were ticked. Um, yeah. Myself and Keegan trade slightly different. And I don't execute and it went my way and Keegan still asked me and I said, bro, believe it or not, mm. that that way you gave me your opinion like created even a little bit of doubt yeah. in me and now, now it's that case of flip. 
that Keegan sees something that I maybe didn't see. And mm. especially if you're in a group where there's a yeah. lot of opinions. It's a lot of noise, man. Um, it's a lot. And I you can't do that. I just felt at that point, like, I need to move myself out of a community because, like, everyone has their own opinion. And then I need to become more firm and confident in mine. You know, I yeah. can't be relying on if this person verify, oh, that's a good trade you took. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good trade now. Or the person in the cell said, I'm seeing a buy. I'm like, oh, which one do I take now? Yeah. So that was just, I uh, moved myself and I focused on myself. And then I focused on pure price action. Just simply chart. Like, can I make a chart, right? And then dabble into that. And I think um, I created my own strategy, um, which was just simply like using a simple one candle. You know, a one candle strategy. I picked up at a certain time in a day. It works that time. And I just focused Is that on what you're still trading? Till today, today. Yeah, till okay. today. It just evolved. It evolved. It, is it what we? I showed you a bit of it. I think years <laughs> ago we we chatted about yeah. that certain yeah. time of the day. Exactly. That, okay. Yes. So there's that specific candle in the day, and um, I evolved as time went on. So I started like picking up. Read, uh, uh, re- basically back testing. Yes. Seeing. Okay. Yeah. And then I put. I don't like to back test with no data. I like to trade it actual yeah, data yeah. so I can back. Like this is real data. You know, like this year I have like 66 percent win rate with a one to two rest ratio straight w- one thing i just want to add mm-hmm. and and i think I, I know the strategy but again it's very simple mm-hmm. and <laughs> for you that I, I know you read a lot because even i think was it two or three years ago mm-hmm. i did that first little interview yeah. with you and i think at that stage you you went massive on ig nah. and i still remember when uh, when i got shaquille on you were like the energy mm-hmm. and you still showed me your books that you're reading um, I, was like just, I, I was just whipping out yo see this book and i <laughs> still <laughs> and i still and i still remember i uh, i finished my mba mm-hmm. and shaquille still said your dream was to become a doctor doctor yeah, still, and still, still still and yeah. to get his phd and from then i saw and and i have to be honest that actually motivated me to see somebody so hungry for knowledge where mm. you were constantly reading um yeah. and and not just trading us this is the thing yeah, you were reading reading, you were reading about psychology yeah. about good habits about business self-development mm. to and and that's the side people don't want to yeah. do I've, i call it like the f- that's where the, the the brand was built i feel i, I call it the, the five elite elements that makes a person successful in any industry if you listen to this if anyone listens to this, they will become successful in anything. So I call it the five elite elements. It's what every person needs to have to become successful. Number one, spiritually. Being spiritually inclined, right? Having some sort of faith because you can't just have faith in uh, money because money, you know. No, money is <laughs> Money nothing. is nothing. Uh, so you need to have faith in a high source. But now that's what I started doing is that, you know what? I can't have money first or physical first or fina- um what do you call it? Um, psychology first. I need to have my spirituality inclined, right? And that's why I started dabbling into books that how to incline my spirituality. Mm. And I said the first thing is spiritually. Second thing is called uh, psychological, right? I need to have, because my subconscious and conscious mind needs to be fed all the time because my subconscious mind is only fed if the conscious, if I make a conscious decision to feed my subconscious mind continuously, right? And then I feed my, uh, so I look back at my, going back to my years growing up, I look at where I grew up, my first seven years of where I grew up, that had an uh, impact on who I am as a person, my personality, my identity, right? So I said, okay, I need to decode and program a new program in this subconscious mind. Mm. And consciously every day do habits that after 21 days becomes first a habit, after 90 days becomes a lifestyle, and then it becomes you, right? Yeah. So I started saying, okay, I need to know about quantum physics. How does law of attraction, quantum physics, how does this really work in the subconscious mind? Because I need to feed the subconscious mind to believe in success and wealth. It's me. Because mm. first you're like, I'm happy, I'm grateful, I'm successful. But it's just, you're just saying it. But I need to really let, let my yeah, DNA. It like needs in there. to be in it's you. It's me. You know, yeah, like you I need speak to. wealthy, I walk wealthy. People come, they feel my vibration. So I need to go into that. So I started studying psychology. That's where I tapped into psychology. Mm. And then I learned quickly that, okay, the mind is nowhere in the brain. If you cut the brain open, there's no mind, right? But if I cut the heart open, I feel some sort of emotion. If I feel anxious, I feel it here. Mm. But I if you open it, there's no some sort of like feelings there. There's a heart, but the heart is pumping its organ. So I, I started tapping into that psychology and then tapping into the physical body, right? So I said, okay, you know what? Spiritually, it's something high source. Psychological, it's in the mind, but also the, the brain has that, you know, the physical of mm-hmm. it. Then I tapped into this emotional, which I picked up. Oh, that emotional feeling is a chemical feeling dropped down by the brain, right? But if I feed the mind, the, the subconscious chemi- mind, yeah. consciously all the time, I can learn how to control my emotions. Because now, yeah. if I don't know how to think properly, the thought process, the chemical will send down to my emotions. 
and I'll feel that anxiousness. You know what I feel? So mm-hmm. I started saying, okay, let me tap into spiritual first, psychological, then emotional, because emotional will be stable to make the right decisions on the market, right? And then physically, and it'll be physically good all the time. Sleep, fit. hydrate, fit. I'm not saying you must be the biggest healthy, builder, but yeah. look, after yourself. look after yourself. Physically, get that sleep in, get the hydration healthy in. Body, healthy body, Everything mind. that make you perform as a high athlete trader mm. on the market, right? physically take care of it and then financially is the last thing it's a ripple effect eventually financially you'll be successful but also with that coming to there which i had to learn because remember i went bankrupt bro i went bankrupt and i didn't tell anyone about it i started talking about it only like uh, recently i went bankrupt twice so when um the first time i bought the house i was 22 years old right bought the house everything's going crazy then i had a massive loss i'm all, i lost like a half like a, like, a, like a quarter million in a day and I was like, yo, what's happening? And then I just lose and lose and end up a million. And I didn't talk about it because I had this social media presence on, this is the trader I am. That's facade yeah. almost here. Yeah, you have to some, upkeep. You know, yeah, and yeah. I was talking about that part. I was like, yo. And I was still having, I had mentor, uh, mentees at very small group, a handful, less than 10 um, students. that was very close to me. We were live trade together. You know, it was, I didn't because I felt the pressure of too many people with me, I couldn't like focus. Mm-hmm, so I kept mm-hmm. it very small, like how we are right now. We're gonna focus and have a sort of routine today. We eat the gym, we go to, we do everything together, a routine, you know, cause the mm. routine is important. Yeah. And then um, going back financially, I reached the peak, you know, like your peak. I, at that age, if you see like 600,000 a month, how do you feel at 22? No, it's, it's insane. It's not maybe dollars, but like in rands, you are crazy. Uh-huh. Like you're like, yo, this is lit. There's, there's a handful of guys. So for me, money went to the mind, man. I feel like that because I started, I can take big risk. I think like automatically I felt, which you taught me something, which I, that's helped a lot. I'm going to get there. Yeah, yeah. How your um, tip, you remember the last school we had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I lost at 600,000. Yeah, yeah. That day gave me like, push me in. That. That's how I got 3 million funded right now. Because of that tip, we'll tap into that. So um, going back, financially, I was doing bad things, man. I was doing like not managing my money, like managing, putting like th- like putting X amount. Like Babylon told me, put a ten percent away, put it to bold, and I wasn't doing any of those things, man. I just make money, and if I make ten k today, twenty k today, I'm gonna spin, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll spin whatever I'm with. Like oh let me think, I make five k. Let's I mean think, let's spin five k today, and I'll drink, and I got an habit of drinking a lot. So uh, drinking and that's beating my physical body, subconscious, uh, everything just going so down, that, yeah. slowly, right? So from that great routine I built, everything just slowly goes down because I have the skill, man. Yeah. You see, you get complacent. I have, I have that's the that slow poison. Yeah, I have the skill. I know what I'm doing, you know. So then it slowly just builds up gradually. Like I can wake up late. I mm. can do what I want because I have the skill. I, I only trade this time of the day. So you I don't follow follow that process anymore. That yeah, got you the result. I, mean, like, I can just trade that time of the day. And I make my money. And you know what? I'm making my money. But what happens is that I'm building these bad routine habits of financial bad habits, right? Spending over, spending too much money. And actually then what happens is I have a massive loss that puts me in this sit back psychologically right now, right? And then from there, it just tolls on and I have to eventually sell my house. But no one knew. No one knew that, man. I had to just sell everything. Sell, I had to let go of everything, man. But... I had to pick up, li- I had to like tell my, my, my wife at that time, like, uh, <laughs> it wasn't because of that, man, you know, because I just got the baby at that time, you know, she just got pregnant. Mm. So it was for me, it's like, and that's a great thing, everything happens for a purpose. At that time, I needed a why, bro, because I had no why. If you listen, everything mm. was because of money, success, yeah. I, I want to prove to my And everything family. was selfish. Like, you see, everything the was just more like. The purpose was on, on exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. So everything happens for a purpose. So that time, everything was like, I want to prove, I want to make more money, I want to make more money, and money is an endless game. So one point, I found out I'm like I'm gonna be a dad, and that's like the the switch. That was that yeah. Yeah. Yes, they're like, yo, this is that real. That purpose now. It gives me a purpose to wake up and like really work for something, and then um, so financially I build this bad habits, and then actually I had to go back to my mom, ask her, look, I have this amount of money. I let, bro, I'm not gonna lie, Miss Push, but I had only like 100k in my money, in my, my 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 bank account, only 100,000, and I said to her, this is how much money I have. My lifestyle was costing about 60,000, so. I was living like, it's not gonna make it, man. You know what I mean? And I had literally 100K and, I, and, my, and my, my expenses, everything comes up to 60,000. Just over 60,000, round off to 60. And then I told her, I took it to Tiger's Mill. Look, I, I, was, I didn't uh, even spend money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I took her a serious conversation. I can't tell Naomi because Naomi's pregnant. Yeah, um, you don't wanna stress her. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, have to yeah. tell you and I need to know you have my back. I told my mom, look, I'm literally like bankrupt, man. I, if, I'm gonna t- if I'm gonna spend this month's money, I'm. I'm finished. Finish. And remember, I blew all my money in trading. Yeah. So I have no trading account, bro. Nothing. So 
my mom tells me, this is the word she told me. Do you believe in yourself? I said, yes. Do you believe you made money with this strategy? Yes. So what's stopping you? And I was like, yeah. But in Go my back to the roots. Mentally, you just, you're in that bad patch because yeah. you've been losing. Exactly. Right? So you don't see the the envision like this, yeah. this light man it's like yeah usually like you just said yes yes i'm like yeah but it, I, I still don't but you believe didn't it. but you didn't believe it it's, it's like you you started doubting yourself yeah but i went back i retract and she asked me oh, should we do called routine and all that so she's like go back to basics and it's all i want all the words all the time is go back to basics yeah. if things don't make sense go back to basics that's the best thing you yeah. know i went back to basics and build up from there and then eventually, like, build up uh, nicely, very nice. And then I think, uh, till fast forwarding, you know, I think I lost at my first biggest day, 300,000 a day. And then it was like, like 60K, 50K is normal in a day for me. So it was like, wow, this is, I'm, 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 I'm there again, man. Yeah. I'm there again, you know, yeah. just now more leveled up. It's like, and I'm on a bigger peak, you know. But now, a great thing is, if you don't control your peak, you turn it into a valley. And if you don't control your value, you will stay long in the valley. Because you, yeah. you can turn your value around very quick if you use a hidden gems in there. They take you to a peak. So what I did is I turned my own, va- own peak to a valley. And then that's the time when I had 600,000 loss. But I was crying, man. I was crying. Yeah, we still, I still reached Yo. out to you and I said, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's have, a, have a call. It was crazy, man. I won't, I won't, I, it was a sore feeling, man. It was so sore. Like, you know what is sore? Like, I won't even lie. Yes, it's crazy because, you know what, in the moment, right, you're like, I can do this. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm gonna, I, all I see is the end result. Like, 600, if I risk, I'm, 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 I'm not supposed to risk 600,000. I'm supposed to risk like 350. You know, so I was like 350. If I'm honest with three, I'm like, okay, okay. Then I, as I'm in the trade, I start thinking add more because I can make like 1.6, 1.5, you know, mil, and, I'll, and I'll be the first trade to like, I, one knows like really doing it. Yeah. And in South Africa, because I don't know the other people, I know myself, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know about them, you know, but I'm gonna give out my logins again. And that's the whole thing. I went on, I was out there, gonna, I'm gonna give my logins again out. I'm gonna draw it. I'm show my bank account because I usually like show my bank account, show the drawing, I show everything. So like I say, you can see everything here is real, you know. And I was like, I'm gonna prove to everyone. I got so clapped there. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> and then <laughs> man I was crying. I yeah. was crying. And I was like, yo, it does. And I said, I pulled out bottle Jack Daniels out, man. I started sipping Jack clean. And I, like, yo, I watched the trade going from it went down immediately, boom. And so it, it wasn't it's like it was like I had no stop loss in. It went down 350 at my stop loss, 400. Five hundred, and that's when, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm alone in the room. Yeah? The whole house became so intense. They knew something's wrong, bro. They didn't even come ask me. They just knew. My family knew. My wife knew. Like something shit just yeah, got real. Something's real, bro. And then I just I had my son already, so I was building everything for my son. And like this is I'm building wealth. Now, my money's like, but like now it was like why game, bro? Like what the fuck happened? And then I was down six hundred, and I literally took a video. And I was thinking that video, I was like, I have to like um, show the truth, you know, like yeah, I, yeah. I'm going to look back at show, this. Show the, show, like, the, show the real stuff. Um, yeah. People are going to relate to that. Yeah. We, we've been talking, it's, it's been a theme in, in, the, in the series we talked about where... Being organic. Yeah, it's like we, we all talk about the, the success stories, mm. but there's so much value in talking about that where you, you went through that dip. And it literally feels like your world is crashing down. Yo, it feels bro. literally, <laughs> you, it, it's yeah. that feeling where no, I, do I don't know, like do anxiety. You know yeah, yeah. yeah. The thing is, it's anxiety. Drop, right? Your like, stomach it's like, drops. Oh. It's like, like your world goes like this. It, hey. it, I'm not, it's, it's a feeling of, uh, like yeah. You, you but it's not like even, like, I mean, we, we, we spoke about the one day we were saying it's like you literally, the sweat is coming down. You, I, you feel I your whole know, stu- like you want to get sick. Your ears you actually start red, to ring. Red, red, they red, ring. Red, yes, and it gets down. super rare, bro. Like, yeah. It's like, I never, I can't explain you. much. just experience. Look, yeah. don't, no, 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 no. no, no, no don't experience. Don't experience it. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take that back. But I mean, like, it's like, I never ex- understood me. Because you could take a loss, but like this loss. Was, those it was big like, losses? Yeah, I was not, I didn't have the risk appetite for it. And the thing, is, the thing is also, I feel like guys, uh, for example, like I've, I've never had a loss like that till yeah. today. And I mean, it's not that I've even trading that big that I can have that loss. Mm. But what's relevant, I think, to your accounts and what you trade, so not, when you have that big loss, what, of a, what we'd say is that 600K relevance to someone else. Mm. So someone else could lose 80K in a day. 
But that 80k it's all, it's all is that it's something that, that takes them maybe it's it's six months it's to enough. make that. It's yeah. enough. And it's, you will feel that pain. Yeah, <laughs> I, I it's so man. Like, and all I felt, if I remember, the broker called me. Oh, really? Yeah. I won't lie. The broker called me, bro. They called me. The first time they called me, I was at like 450, 450,000 down. And what, did, they, what did they say? Hey, they, they phoned me and, and I ended the call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to speak, man. I ended the yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. And then. They called me again, and I remember all they saying is like, "Are you okay? Don't do something stupid. Don't sure. do something stupid." Is and that I the thing? Do they do that? You bro, they call. No. You so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna tell you, and I know exactly what broker that is. <laughs> the the only reason that broker was monitoring your account while you were experiencing mm. it is because. They knew there was a risk on the table. For yeah, them. and also let's talk about like I remember I had also clientele. Yeah, yeah so, so I'm open my guys. Also, okay, I, I had okay. big so, clients. So, man. so here's the thing though: if if a guy is making money like Shaquille was making, there's somebody in their risk team, like yeah. literally monitoring they, Shaquille. Do you know they used to they used to sit too much? Like they used to sit to my trades, and I was I, I'll take trades here at the office. Maybe maybe I'll visit him, and they literally watch my trades. Yeah, yeah. God's dude. No, no, I'm not gonna cap, bro. Like I can see this. I can tell you how the system looks, man. They on their side, yeah. they literally watch my trades. Yeah, so yeah. and sometimes they'll try to convince you, like um, in, um, close the trade. Yeah, close the trade, or like why don't you add more position and add more money yeah. and stuff like that. Like I, rem- I remember I was with. So yeah, that happened. Is and that broker still open? Oh, that's another story, man. Okay, Yo, so let's they, 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 there's your reason. Let's let me tell <laughs> you what. Let me tell you what, man. If they did me dirty, man. If they a broker is monitoring. They did me dirty big time. If a broker is monitoring your trades, there's there's a problem. So um, yeah. spe- specifically <laughs> when when you're winning, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. you see when you're losing, they won't bother you, man. <laughs> let's let's fast forward. Um, you you still young? What what so age are you now? I'm 24. So just from a story, you've you've lived life yeah. in a in a short Yo, space man. of time. Yeah. You've you've lived li- you've you've lived somebody else's 30 year life sure. in six years, but um. Coming back to to going through all these dips, and I've I've said it before as well, there there's so much value in that. Yeah. Because if you reflect now, like you said, things happen for a reason. That is where the growth comes, and mm. that is where you can sit now on a podcast. Mm. And we actually talked talked about it with a, with another gentleman here earlier today, where I said. As a guest on a podcast, some people just carry some depth in them mm. because mm. they've lived life. And that is what's happened now. There's a certain depth to you that if somebody comes to you and he's crying, or for instance, yeah. when, when I saw, saw I you post it, that it, and like I reached out to you. Remember when we had a call. Yes. And that's why like, when we had a call, that thing's changed for me. A lot changed, man. And, yeah. and and the, the, the reason the reason I reach out to you is because mm. I've been there. I yeah. just didn't put it on social media, but I've been there. And that's why immediately, um, you'll, you'll remember, I said, bro, chill out tonight, mm. tomorrow, let's have a call. Because again, that is where that thing I went through mm. now gives me that depth to sit down with you and say, Shaquille, let's take it from A to B, mm. let's shut it out. It's not the end, all of that. And then, so. not a, what said to me, we had a call, right? The thing is, you spoke about, you remember the lot size in and keeping a consistent lot size, consistent risk, percentage, and all that. So, I took the break. Uh, that happened in August last year, right? So, I took the break, didn't trade for a couple of months, and then came January. I just a whole mindset. I took everything you shared from how I should go about it and don't feel, don't just feel because you can't win up right now that you must risk us go up, you know, keep consistent for the quarter and stuff like that. There were certain things you experienced, do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I went back to the drawing board and I said to myself, okay, look, um, I'm going to tap into the prop from space again because I was tapping into it through the years, but I didn't like really go mm. like like crazy in it, man. Like I'm gonna really like tap into it and get max fun in all profits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, I'll tap into that. And as I say, like everything happens for a purpose. And that loss just um, matured my risk appetite. I'll say like it matured it. The reason why, because taking, uh, being able to hold that type of risk and going to a prop firm and see like two thousand dollar drawdown, that doesn't. It's like normal. No, you yeah, know? It's, it's just two thousand. Yeah, a thousand dollars. It's just a thousand dollars, man. So. 
going back and I kept that, there was like a, a risk thing you told me, like keep a consistent lot size, you know? And um, I went in there and I said, let me tap into the prop firm space. The first prop firm actually messed me up, man. Is one, that the one you posted? 200,000, the first one, 200,000 payout. Which which one was that? That was the speed fund, it's uh, like speed fund okay, here. Okay. I did them. So I tapped into the prop firm space and then I just got funded like a first count, like it was 1.9 uh, um, million. Then I got I got it funded like in about so about two two weeks by proper risk one or two all my trades I don't take stop loss um, sorry uh, before before yeah. we chat have you have you received the payout yeah I did see payouts yeah. from who from uh, the fund, the forex funder they but did actually pay me out this one the, the the one you posted no this one this one this one is this one now is about uh, eight thousand nine hundred dollars I'm still getting paid out but that's the one so that's another one I, there's two payouts I think I got denied from I, I, not denied I'm still with, in with the, the forex funder yeah the forex funder didn't want to give my trades out because I was winning too much. So okay. send me an email, man. So, <laughs> so we'll we'll Have maybe email, yeah, man, we'll, like we'll, we'll crazy, maybe right? we'll maybe clip this before then, but yeah. let me know if yeah. they don't pay out. Otherwise, okay. Chad, so right now we're in the process of getting paid out right now. So we're gonna see this week if okay. they get paid out. So yeah. yeah. So once this comes out, I'll give you an update. There'll be something on the screen yet to say yeah. avoid. The uh, yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like tapping, like I'm in FT mode right now. I'm tapping on to fund it next, uh, but I reached the point where I got funded about close to four million right now. So life capital and uh, this in challenges uh, another few millions. So I was trying to get like twenty million um, funding, yeah, okay. um, twenty million dollars. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the tattoo you can see manifestation man the <laughs> method yeah man i got the started i was like yeah, i must get 20 million dollars man that's my goal so i was like okay let me just continue uh, in, but in rands right now i'm sitting about four million yeah okay and then i was trying to like in total a few more millions i think about three more million right okay. in challenges so i said okay cool let me tap into this and get as ma much funding as possible but with low risk you know just super low okay. risk because you don't need to have the like you know risking five percent we can't just like risk one percent if you have like a so you have five million risking one percent it's decent it's, money it's man decent you know, money, yeah. notice and that's why i just started typing that and then end up being on like top trade like the, the leaderboard in the, in the world you know um top yeah, five. I saw that. yeah i saw that came top five um and i just kept doing that and then at one point they even sent an email man to tell me like <laughs> what what, what <laughs> the, did i say the, yeah, <laughs> i'm not allowed to share my trades with people yeah, hey, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I have the email, yeah, man. Like, okay. like so there's like because they say like uh, my strategy is the way I trade and that, but it's high, it's good. Not it's not high risk. It's like proper. It's one is to two, one yeah, is to yeah, like yeah. like I'm, I'm I'm now running up like a one is to four right now, so it's like it's low. It's good still, you know. But it's just yeah. the the consistency of it. It's not even a high win rate. It's like a sixty six percent win rate with a one is to two, yeah, so yeah. it does hit. But um, for I, I guess you know the problem space is crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I think, uh, dude, time time flies, and, uh, sure. and it's actually actually uh, one sure. of those podcasts where it's so much, man. Where where there's so much to unpack, and and we I did. actually there's gonna be a part two for this. Definitely, one. <laughs> we, we definitely. I was actually supposed to get Shaquille. I think it was last year. Yeah. Was it last year? Mm. Uh, well, actually, this year I wanted to get you Not down year, to no. P. Oh, this this year, beginning of January. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, let me come down to you, man. I want to come to your office. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking uh, for part two, we'll we'll yeah. get Shaquille on in Port Elizabeth yeah, in the home base. No, give him give him something like they must either like comment down below, man. Or, comment, yeah. Or like like the video, get it to thousand at least, eh? Guys, eh? if we can get the a likes up likes. to a thousand, now, thousand uh, likes and a thousand comments equal it. Okay, yeah. thousand yeah. likes, yeah. thousand comments. We we're up. gonna get Shaquille to yeah. Port Elizabeth. Uh, we'll we'll maybe even do a weekend seminar. Yeah, for, we, for even the guys we do. Exclusive. How about this? Like, cause I, um, uh, I don't know. You, I don't see you drop any content. I say like, let's do just trading, like a trade, and yeah. show them what is like a trade, like routine, and just being ourselves. You know. But but let's let's make it exclusive. We'll mm -hmm. only open up twenty spots. It will be yeah. completely for free. Workshop with myself, Keegan, and Shaquille in Port Elizabeth. Thousand comments, be, thousand likes. Dope, no? be Twenty sick. people. Twenty. Bro, I'll be tapping me. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty if I was people. There, bro, I'll be tapping in, bro. Like, trah, we'll, come we'll, whole family in, yo. Grandma, <laughs> come see you. <laughs> we'll and and here's the thing. We'll <laughs> we'll drop the the strategies. Is it and people for only post Elizabeth or anyway, like in no, South Africa? Anyway. No, no, uh, no, no. Port Elizabeth, or Port if Elizabeth. they if they want to fly down to P yeah. for that weekend, yeah, you yeah. can. But yeah. uh, we'll be we'll be hosting it in Port Elizabeth at the. Uh, 2G's compound in Cape Road. Mm. So, um, Chad, I, I firstly want to thank you, thank you Shaquille, um, 
it is uh, absolutely beautiful to hear the stories to to also <laughs> see the ups the downs yeah. and i've been i've been privileged enough to to follow your journey mm. i think for the last three years as mm. well how you've progressed mm. and I've, i think i've told you as well uh, i love the transparency um i love to see the growth and also having the the privilege like you said not necessarily a mentor but somebody a little bit older mm. in the game to for you to just to I be think that I appreciate soundboard. the bounce the bounce of like my stuff yeah like, so, yo. <laughs> so to be that <laughs> it's like, twi- like twice i gave like yo chris i need yeah. your help man. <laughs> <laughs> but look at every, every one of it is valuable man every one of it I, like I, literally every one of it and that's why i said like right now i only have one person who i go speak to if i need something it's like you yeah. you know because right now i don't go to anyone because i can't feel, i feel like they're not in that uh it's South Africa, like South Africa traders, I don't know, man. It's yeah. just a different ball game, you know. So at least it, uh, there's maturity, there's some sort of wisdom I can get from, you know, and steal it and go yeah. use it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But honestly speaking, like, yeah, man, that's it. I uh, thank you as well. I appreciate Kicks. you as well. Any closing uh, remarks from you? Um, honestly, guys, I think as I said, I at this point I'm almost speechless. I don't know how I actually didn't know this much about Is you. It? <laughs> uh, but I think we we definitely saved the best for last. I yeah. think yeah. this this one is going to be. You already said much, no, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. And I said I was. I feel I like I spoke too much on you. Nah, nah. I, I, I was honestly in shock. It, yeah. it really was. I think we we always talk about this this, this drive and this passion. Yeah. I mean the yeah. same thing. When it came to my rugby, when also like in the bodybuilding, yeah, I mean, but you're sitting in here with someone you're like bodybuilding, eh? you'll yeah. know it takes a whole other level and passion to yeah. do it. And seeing people that have this with trading. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. I freaking love it. The hunger, the mm. compa- the, the it bounces off. It bounces off. It bounces off. Even, even where I'm at today in my thing and us having a community and all this, it's still moments like this where even it was a case of I would just sit there and I was just listening. I wanted yeah. to yeah. hear the yeah. conversation. Yeah. No, so, it, was, it was it was awesome. Um, no, no, you, you never. S- y- here's the thing with the podcast and being a podcast host. It's it's not really about us. Mm. Yeah, and the. The thing with us, even though we're in the podcast, we're just facilitating the chat. Mm. And it's the, the privilege is for us to, to get to know you mm. and also for the viewers to, to see you, Shaquille, because mm. they'll maybe come on there and they'll see, for instance, the the the, yeah. not, the let's call it the shinier yeah, side they, they but they, instagram yeah and, yeah, and maybe instagram side, like. and maybe they don't go back to where it started but for yeah. instance me and and at that stage i think you were still trading with one monitor you had the small yeah. little uh, like, space i'm, I'm in kind of like room. six years right now see going for seven six years right now so i think the time we got it was like my third year yeah yeah so you were still small yeah. setup everything still humble beginnings yeah. um, still humble yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> no, like in the comments, <laughs> oh, so yeah. <laughs> no, no, I just mean like yeah, no, a, no. at that stage, you you haven't elevated to where you are now. Yeah. So you you're obviously a more mature trader. Um, you've got the battle scores. You you've got that substance now mm. to you to actually provide value and say, mm. listen, I've been there. But, but I must I must also say one thing I must I mm. also love was that I think we we spoke about just before the podcast was. Mm. We were talking about even at the stage you are now we always and i always have this conversation with chris is there's no difference with us as south african traders mm-hmm. to why we can't be on that same level the guys yeah, yeah. exactly man. and 100%. i love the fact I that feel. again we're having that conversation saying this isn't the end for you yet nah like you're still I feel like it's just like this is the now. beginning yeah this like i feel like and, and, and the great part is like i was like you know what, i must stop tapping into that in that that community there yeah. you know and the, the moment i started networking with them there it's just like the mindset is different man it's like yeah it's it's just a complete different thing like if like i was speaking with a uh, paladin right that's the, i think the biggest trade I'm, I'm in connection with so i would talk with him and i also asked him for um, advice and that we chat a lot actually on instagram so and you like i just just talking to you man you see the mindset is like bro like it's crazy like yeah. compared to like if i speak and that's why i don't associate myself with a lot of traders here people always ask me like why don't you like chill no, with the, the i'm gonna lie i'm gonna lie bro i chilled with the goats even right and much love but nah the truth is they're not traders man they just there's Most a whole they're just marketers, marketers they're yeah. marketers bro and, and i have Look, if I see him today, I'll tell him, bro. Like, I'll see them both. And that's why I disassociate myself with the goats, with Jason, with all of them. Because they're just marketers. And the thing is, like, I will go through so much. You want to elevate as a trader. I'm six years in, and I'm pushing yeah. so hard. But you're posting this and that. And I'm like, what, brother? When you meet him, you're sitting, <laughs> there, and you're sitting down, you realize, like, nah, man, there's something not right here. And you, you, the more you sit with him, it's like, I be. Yeah. Yeah. I be. 
And that's why, and then you really pick up, okay, this guy, you know what, nah, man. No substance. Like, nah, yeah. like, even, like, I was really looking forward to meet uh, Josh Naidu. I was like, yo, will this me link up? And the moment I linked up, he's like, yo, I need to meet, uh, meet with you, bro, meet with you. He's been messaging me. And when I met up in the, f- like, I was so excited. I thought we were going to network, you know, like, just chat about trading, yeah, like, let's like chat, business, you know, and like, uh, you know, bro, Ivy. first thing came up is that um, he said to me this, bro. I'll give you as I'll give you um I think it was uh forty percent of whatever your clients lose. That's what he told me. Uh, yeah, forty yeah. percent. And then um because you own, like they own the broker and stuff like that, right? At first he told me they didn't own it. At first he said he didn't own it, right? And then he owned it. And he owned it. So he's like, um, <laughs> 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 look, and and, and 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 he was like telling me about like, yeah, we need forty percent of all the what clients lose, and then. And then we will like trade, and the whole thing is that's why he does it trading, and he loses on purpose because he knows what's happening. Guys, he that's was not paid to say I look, that. No, no, God, no. Look, I look at ten feet. I'm like ten feet of Bible. My son is alive, man. I ain't alive. Yeah, yeah. I'm a living God. We've yeah. we've, we've so been saying this, guys. So I'm not gonna lie to you, man. There's people out here. Hard and work, dedication. And, and, and that's <laughs> why, unfo- if, you, if you look at my Instagram, bro, I followed Jason. They all still follow me. I follow yeah. Jason. I followed everyone. If you look at my following. I follow very few, right? And because I, I realize people you, just you talk about... You have to feed what you said there, whatever you feed yeah. and um, use social media as a tool. If it's not exactly. adding value. Yeah. yeah, but like if you associate yourself following, if you're following someone that is not adding value and they're doing bad things, yeah. you associate yourself, you're following yeah. it. So I didn't, so I just, yeah. Chad, uh, what a beautiful chat. Yeah, that's and good, man. I want to, I want, just want to thank you guys. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for watching. If you got this far, you obviously enjoyed us as much as we did. Yeah. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we will see you guys live Monday to Friday on the opening bell and on Wall Street sessions with myself, Keegan, and Javen, and our guest today, um, Shaquille Samai. Awesome, awesome podcast. And peace and love, Chad. We will see you guys on the next one. Peace out, baby. Peace out. Cheers. That was a nice one. How long was that, man? Yo. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> that was a <laughs>